We're out here on South 15, just outside of Jackson, Kentucky. For the last time we had a court date that I really couldn't comment on a whole lot at the time uh, in any earlier video because uh, we were fleeced by some pretty crooked state police out here and I wasn't sure how it would affect the case. Uh, it's such a beautiful place. It is so plagued with drug addiction and crooked law enforcement. However, I will say that the judge that they have is a very honorable man, and they do have people out here that do try to help instead of incarcerate. Some people are just repeat offenders and they never learn. However, I will share an observation out of the many times they continued this was that uh, out of all the young people who are caught up in the system for drug use, they seem to come from single parent households. And that's a shame. I wish I could have taken you guys on a trip to a place called Elkview where wild horses run. But man, I'm telling you, as soon as my wife finishes her smoke, we won't, we don't smoke in the vehicle. We're gonna get the hell out of here and never come back. This is a perfect example of towns you don't want to go to, man. They're full of drug treatment centers. They're full of welfare offices, funeral homes. The hospitals are terrible. That river on Jack, the Kentucky River Medical Corporation, they call it. They have people on staff that can't even count money. You walk in, and the first thing they do is they bring you a tray with painkillers. You know? That's a shame, and you wonder why everybody here is addicted to drugs. I say it's by design. But anyway, oh my God. And so I'm back in a more civilized region of Kentucky. Look, I'm not going to beat up on Brother County because they have their share of problems, and it's nothing that you or me or anybody's ever going to do anything about. Sometimes certain communities are better off to be left to handle their own problems. There's a lot of problems with the, the city of Jackson. Uh, Jackson, Kentucky. Uh, that's in Brother County. Um, got a couple of things. All right. That first, I'd like to address, okay, is to just avoid moving to places like that. You have to understand that they're economically depressed and there's a drug pandemic there, man, that is far beyond anything that you've ever witnessed. Even those of you living in those inner cities where, you know, you think, oh, drugs are bad here. Yeah, move to the woods. These small mountain communities, they're not very used to uh, outside social interactions. So know that if you buy up land there just because it's cheap and you move in, all right, know that you're not one of them. You're not from around there, and a lot of them will never let you forget it. And I'm not upset that, you know, I mean, it, it's kind of a shame because, you know, it's so beautiful and scenic. But, man, I'm telling you, it just seemed like at some times the meth heads were the best part of it. Uh, you have different things going on there, man. I mean, you know, you move into a place like that, you're going to see hardship like you've never seen. You know, uh, your first instinct you, 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 you're going to have is you're going to want to help. But know that what you view as a hardship, some people see as just another day. So even though your intentions are noble, you may just be imposing yourself. And that's not going to make anything any better. So keeping in mind how the road to hell was paved with good intentions, just avoid those areas. You know, these people, that's all they do is thrive and survive. And it's not a racist part of the country, man. I mean, these people have their own struggle and the color of their neighbor's skin is the least of their concerns. Now, Jackson being founded after President Andrew Jackson, who wasn't a fan of uh, that town, by the way, because of what he described as a rapacious form of government. It was just a lot of rich, controlling people who only pass laws and things like that in their own interest and a lot of the people in the outside mountain areas just became somewhat of a stateless zone and you know they just their, their problems got worse there's a reputation for neighbors being divided amongst neighbors yet it's strange how there's a church every tenth of a mile okay and everybody's about jesus yet everybody that i live next to up in the mountains will try to steal and claim a part of your land or even some of your livestock um 
couple of quick things uh, I wanted to point out again just don't move there you know what I mean these people they don't need your help okay they're doing just fine you know without you getting in the way um, they got a man there uh, Reverend John Bunn he's a good dude and he, he he does everything he can I talked to him actually when I first moved there it actually eased my mind to know that there are people there that do actually uh, care for their community so you know, the only thing is you're from the outside and your help is only going to be seen as intrusive. So just find some place uh, in a higher populated uh, area with unrestricted outskirts and focus on that. You don't want to bring kids to an area like that. Their school lunches, some of it's moldy. Just read the comments on some of my videos. Uh, I believe it was uh, white privilege doesn't exist here or something like that. We've got some locals really uh, opening up in the comments section. So go ahead and look at that video so I don't have to repeat anything here. But what makes things worse, okay, is when you have crooked law enforcement. Because uh, you've got no middle class there. You either have money or you don't. And if they think you have money, they're going to do their damnedest to try to get their hands on it. These controlling families are the police department, they're the fire department, the DMV, the post office, the lawyers, the real estate agents, the banks, okay? Uh, it wasn't until I put the house up for sale that uh, suddenly a suspension appeared on my plates, which was crazy. And this guy pulled me over. He uh, asked for, he said, you know why I pulled you over? And I said, no, I don't. And he says, well, you, you, your plates are suspended, which I know they weren't, but apparently they were just very recently. So I gave him my license, my insurance, my registration. It was all valid. And he still wrote me a ticket. And as I was driving away and I was looking at the ticket, it said that I didn't provide any valid documentation. And I thought, well, what the hell? You know? And I looked at my court date and it was set up on my closing day. So I thought, what are these guys trying to trap me? So what they do is they'll bleed you dry and you'll end up in a place called quicksand. And man, you don't want to end up in a place like that because... You know, there's people there. I mean, they struggle. I know there's some good people there, but they have problems. And it just doesn't seem like there's very many people helping them. Okay? Uh, for one, I blame the police department for that. Not Jackson Police Department, but the state police. Because there are law enforcement people. Based on interviews I've conducted for my book, I know there are state police officers that are bought and paid for by drug manufacturers to turn and look the other way. OK, there's more uh, profit and fighting crime than there is to ending it. All right. Does that make sense? Fantastic. Um, the crooked police. What's his name? So you had that guy. I went to court. The judge, he looked at it. He seems like a cool guy. I, I forget his name, but uh, he just threw it out. OK. And then while we were moving out just a few weeks later. OK. I went and uh, dropped off our first load, which was like our TVs, our guns, stuff like that. Uh, up at the uh, new house here. Um, if you put in 1469 Lower Talby Fork Road, Van Cleve, Kentucky, 14385, look at the stream out behind that house. All right, now my deed was very clearly written that I owned to the edge of the stream, but the lady on the other side of the stream seemed to think that, I, that she owned half my backyard. Now I know, you get a survey, right? A lot of the uh, landmarks or a lot of the property in the mountains is done by landmark and over time landmarks change. However, that stream in particular was sort of like the Rio Grande. My deed clearly said that I owned to the edge of it. Hers said that she owned to the edge of hers. But, you know, she had money. She had a big mouth. And I'm telling you what, man, these mountain bitches are out of control. And some of the happiest men that I've ever met in that town were single. And I understand why. Uh... It was just this ongoing thing. She was just a huge pain. And, you know, she always, I'm getting my gun, you know, but she'd never come out with one. So uh, I just kind of let it roll off. But, man, when I started rolling out of there with that, you know, with my first truckload, while I left my wife and boy behind to finish loading our stuff, she started up again. And I get back and I see Officer Kevin Day of the State Police, Post 13 in Hazard County. He's a crooked piece of human garbage. Uh, he was standing there. My boy was in cuffs. And this guy's screaming at the side of his head. So I just roll up and I say, hey, guys, what's going on? And he says, none of your business. And I'm like, well, I, this is my property. So everything on my property is my business. What happened? And he looked at his partner and looked at me and says, bad parenting. And I said, 
I realized right away, this is something that black people got to pay attention to, all right? Because if this man wanted to put me in the back seat of his car, he would have. And I didn't get stupid and I didn't challenge him too much. Uh, I said, okay, I can agree I've made some mistakes, but what happened here today? And then he started screaming about blood and guns and mailboxes. And, you know, my people are from East Tennessee, but some of these mountain people in Kentucky... They got a different dialect, so when they're screaming to the point to where their voice is cracking, I just, my ears already ring. 30-year musician, that's all it left me was half-deaf, ringing ears, and, you know, I, I couldn't understand what this guy was saying, so I said, okay, can you calm down and talk to me? He let go of my boy's arm and marched up to me with his fist balled up, and I said, don't you two, I'm going to calm down. He goes, I'll arrest your wife right now, and I said, for what? She was standing on the porch, you know. He says, an AI. I said, I have no idea what that is, man. I said, you guys got a different word for everything down here. What is it? And he says, public intoxication. I said, well, we're in the mountains. She's on my front porch. This is private property. She's not doing anything wrong. She wasn't saying anything. So he says, private property don't matter. He says, I can arrest you for standing on your front porch with an open container anytime I want. And I said, buddy, I doubt that. And then he started to get loud again. And then I noticed he wasn't wearing his body camera. He was supposed to, but a lot of these guys down here don't. So you have to be careful when it comes to that, okay? You just don't lose your head. I mean, they're not very educated here. So, you know, and a lot of them aren't in certain areas. So, you know, you just got to not feed into it, all right? And I said, all right, you know you're on camera right now, right? Crystal clear audio. He stopped right there. And he says, can I see the video? And I said, no, you can't. What are we talking about here? What happened? And he said, well, your neighbor said he po pointed a gun at her and punched her mailbox. And I go, okay, well, I know he didn't point a gun at her because I just dropped my guns off at her new house. We're moving out because of them people. You know, it was like an ongoing thing for months. Every couple of weeks, she'd stir up, start up about something because we weren't from around there. Uh, and so he says, so he says, well, he said she was pointing guns and he punched her mailbox. And I said, okay, well, she's lying about that. There's no guns on the property except for the one I had on my hip. I didn't tell him that because, you know, I didn't know where that would have led. There's no duty to notify here. So I just kind of tried to keep a lid on the thing. I was trying to defuse this guy and get him to calm the hell down because, man, I wouldn't put it past this guy to try and shoot me and then put me, he was resisting arrest. I don't trust these people down here or in communities like that. I mean, when you think about it, most of the people in Breda County have a high school diploma, yet they can barely articulate a sentence. So who do you think is policing them? Okay, now I will give props to Officer Elvis Noble. He's a good man. But I'm talking specifically about the state police. Okay, so I said, okay, was there any witnesses? Uh, she's got trail cams everywhere. Does she have any video? And he's like, well, no, but that's what she said. I'm like, okay, well, then clearly she's lying. He goes, well, I still got him on this mailbox. It's all right, all right, all right. I'll give you 100 bucks right now so we can just end this. I said, it's about a $40 mailbox. I'll give you 100 Let's just be done with it, and we'll be out of here. And he goes, well, she said she'll pay for it. And I'm like, okay, well, that's nice of her. Then uh, well, what do we do? What do we do from here? Do I just follow you down and post some bond? He says, well, he's got to stand before a judge where we can release him. So I went and picked him up. It had something. He listed the mailbox. Says that sh that he punched it, and then it said on his charges that he took a garbage can and repeatedly smashed it against her brand new vehicle, and nobody ever brought that up. And not only that, but her name was Missy Haynes. It's on her mailbox. It's on her vanity plate. Yet she put down on the police report her name was Omalie something. Plus this bullshit charge he just tacked on at the last minute. He was determined to get some money out of us for one thing or another. So, long story short, we went, up, went and showed up for the court date. And they didn't call us up. We were there five hours. And then finally walked up to the judge. And he goes, oh, the paperwork isn't ready. You got to come back next month. That was a two-hour drive to get there to find that out. So... A month later, we go back down there. We sit there half the day. They didn't call us up again. So I went up and talked to the judge. He goes, oh, they still don't have your paperwork ready. I'm like, God damn it. Okay, all right, fine. So we come back a month after that. Two-hour drive. I had to leave 6 o'clock in the morning and drive through some foggy mountain, you know, scenery. It's beautiful on the way in, but just having your gut and not knowing that, man, these guys are going to try to get something out of me. I know they will. I show up. 
sit there to the end of the end of the day and then they go well we, d- did you talk to a public defender and I, said, I, I haven't talked to anybody yet you had me come down three times so far and it was for nothing she says okay we'll sign you a public defender come back in a month and i'm like oh so a month later which was about two weeks ago we drove down and i talked to the public defender right before we drove down and i explained to him what happened and i'm so glad to hear this guy was northern because it seemed like anybody so far that i've dealt with and brother that has a southern accent tries to screw me out of money okay my people i love southern culture but these people aren't my people uh so he says yeah don't worry about it because you know what we're just gonna go out well, i'll get that most of it thrown out he'll probably have to pay for the mailbox i'm like fine let's just get this over with man i said this is like the fourth time i gotta drive down here he goes all right well we'll see you tomorrow so we drive down two hours and as soon as i walk in the door they tell me the guy at the metal detector oh there's no court today it was just canceled last minute we're gonna have to you know reschedule i'm like when i just drove down here you guys told me last night you know, and he goes, well, we don't have enough sheriff to, to do bailiff. I'm like, oh, my God. So they sent us another. So they sent us a letter. What was it? Uh, two days ago. They gave us two days notice and said, OK, be in Brother County tomorrow. Now, I mean, I understand, you know, that a lot of people there don't have jobs so they can show up at a, mo- uh, at a moment's notice. But, you know. We got to arrange stuff. And now here we are. Two days notice. Fortunately, it was on my boy's day off anyway. So we went down there the whole day, man. And they finally, they called him in, you know, and I waited outside uh, because they asked a lot of us to step outside. And not only did the public defender say, yeah, I know Officer Kevin Day, he has a reputation for this type of conduct. And I go, okay, well, why is it that I can't seem to file a complaint or anything? And he goes, well, We'll handle it. Don't worry about it. And the judge, I'm telling you, every time we were there and I sat through a court hearing, he seemed like a very fair and honorable person. And he, and he was. I mean, I think he's a good dude. It's the state police that are crooked. You have to avoid these small towns. It's these people, man. They just will do anything for money. But fortunately, they got a couple of good guys there at the top that really help us out. They threw everything out. We didn't have to pay for the mailbox or anything. And it was just like a weight has been lifted, man. So I told him, I said, let's get the hell out of here. You know, this is something to consider when you guys are thinking about leaving the city. Yeah, I know those photos on Zillow look fantastic. And the price is very, very, very affordable. But there may be a reason why it's affordable. You know what I mean? And keep in mind, they can lie about flood zones. They can lie about the amount of property. This lady, yeah, apparently she has a reputation for making stuff up on people. That's just how mountain women are, man. I've I've met like one or two friendly people, but for the most part, you're not from around there. And they'll never let you forget it. So don't move there. I'm doing what I can, guys, to help you kind of, you know, give you information that you can use to sift through all those listings. Because I know a lot of those photos look nice. But what are the neighbors like? You know? Your white privilege doesn't exist here. So don't come down here thinking, oh, it's an overwhelmingly white town. I'm a white guy. I should get along just fine. You think so? I'm telling you, that is not the case. They're clickish in a lot of these places, man. I think I'm in a decent place right now. I mean, they're still kind of like holding out on the job front a little bit, but they seem to be opening up some. You just got to kind of hang in there and be patient and make sure you got a little money left over to float on until they kind of open the floodgates for you a little bit. But, I mean, it's how you keep towns orderly. You just can't let anybody in. You know what I mean? I can't say that I blame them. It's a nice little area. It's a shame I can't tell you where I'm at. But I will end up doing future videos on other places, okay, that you might want to look into. All right? And I will let you flat out know. And if you got any, uh, if you see anything, uh, you know, in the south or east or west Kentucky area and you need to know what what, uh, it's like, Go ahead and leave me a comment if I know anything at all about it. I've been all over the state. Believe me, I've been doing research for my new book. I'm going to make it easy for you guys who don't have a whole lot of money to get the hell out of those cities because you're going to have to. I'm telling you, sometime within the next 12 months, there's going to be bad things to really, really escalate. and It's going to happen quickly. Okay, so if there's any towns or whatever you'd like some information on, let me know. I'll do what I can to help you out. Just don't come down here and vote Democrat and f- it up here. You know what I mean? California, you know? Keep in mind that despite 
you know, the interest rates going up on your house and you're thinking, I'm never going to get, you know, X amount of dollars for this house. Yes, you will. Despite what interest rates are doing, panic, fear is still driving the market. Somebody from California will buy your house for a top dollar just to get out of California. Okay, that's how I'm making money on these houses. So I hope you found this video helpful. And until the next video, guys, wake up. Let me help you. We'll holler at you later.